No longer the priority in worship. That's when man changes the communion from every Sunday to only the first or the third Sunday. Amen. Up in here. When God is no longer the priority, he'll change the commemoration of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so some of them will do it on the first Sunday. Some of them do it on the first and third Sunday. Some some of them do it once every six months, and then some of them do it once a year. But the problem that we ought to have with that kind of activity is that they were not the ones who instituted the commemoration. And if you didn't originate it, you don't have any power to be doing any editing to it. Amen. If you didn't start it, you ain't got no right to stop it. See, Jesus started communion. Look with me at Matthew chapter 26 and beginning at verse number 26. We'll see when our Lord instituted the communion, the, the thing that we consider as the commemoration of his death, burial, and resurrection. In Matthew chapter 26 and beginning at verse Number 26, the Bible says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of sins. The Lord gave us the institution of the communion and when you look at Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and beginning at verse number 23, when Paul reaccounts what Jesus established on that occasion, Paul indicates that he had received of the Lord that which also he had delivered unto them, and that was the fact that the Lord Jesus, it was the same night it was in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, take eat this is my body which is broken for you he said this do in remembrance of me is it a shame before God that the Lord said this do in remembrance of me and you got some folk who are going to remember him once a year what kind of honor are you showing the Lord your God if you just don't remember him once a year? But then the Bible says in verse 25, after the same manner also, he took the cup and when he had some saying that this cup is a New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now Paul adds a fact here. Paul says, for as often as ye eat of this bread, as often as we drink of this cup, we do show forth the Lord's death until he come again. And there are, it's a shame before God that we got some folk out here religiously that call themselves calling on the name of God. They call themselves being a part of the family of God. They sang songs about God. They cried tears when folk give him the account of how God suffered when he was on his way to Calvary. But when it comes to truly remembering him in the way that the Lord said, I want you to remember me. They change it to once or twice a year or even twice a month. But I'm so glad we know better than that. Because in Acts chapter 20 and beginning at verse number 7, the Bible shows us that it was upon the first day of the week that the disciples came together to break bread. That's when they came together to commemorate the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord. And since every week has a first day, then that's the day that God has ordained for us to come together and to commemorate what he did for us when we couldn't do it for ourselves. You see, when God is no longer the priority in worship, not only will man change the commemoration date, but when God is no longer the priority in worship. Music will be brought into the auditorium. See, worship, my brothers and sisters, and my business
visits and friends you need to understand has always been about honoring and glorifying God. Now if you're going to honor and if you're going to glorify God, you must offer unto God what he asked for in the way that he asked for it. And so when it comes to worshiping God, I can't do it the way I feel like in my heart. I can't do it the way I uh, the way I seen that God ought to accept my worship. When I come to worship God, I have to understand what God is commanding me to do. And then I need to do exactly what it is that God has commanded of me to do. When we look at Colossians chapter 3 and beginning at verse number 17, the Bible shows us plainly that everything we do, we've got to do it by the authority of God. In Colossians chapter 3 and beginning at verse number 17, the Bible shows us here that everything we do, we got to do it according to the authority we get from God. And so the Bible says, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks unto God and the Father by him. This phrase, in the name of, literally means by his authority. If you remember in Acts chapter 4, when Peter and John healed that impotent man that the Pharisees wanted to know by what name or by what power have you done what you've done? And that's when Peter and John had no reservation telling them that it's by the name of Jesus Christ that this man is made whole today. In other words, he was telling him that it's by the authority of Jesus that we have the power to make this man walk who had never been able to walk. And so when the Bible says that it must be done in his name, that's literally telling us by his authority. And so the way I sing to God in New Testament worship has to be by the authority of God. Well, preacher, where do I find the authority of God? Where do I find the command for how God wants me to worship him in New Testament worship? The authority from God comes from the word of God. If you look with me at Hebrews chapter 13 and beginning at verse number 15 at Hebrews chapter 13 and beginning at verse number 15 we'll see that the word of God gives us the authority of God. In Hebrews chapter 13 and beginning at verse number 15 the Bible says by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Notice that the Bible commands us that if we're going to offer unto God the praise our sacrifices continually unto God it must be the fruit of our lips even in this passage you could put an instrument in there if you wanted to when God spells out specifically the fruit of my lips he understands what he wants and he tells me specifically that he don't want no strings he don't want no beating he wants the fruit of my lips he wants the sound that I make with my mouth he wants me to lift up my voice in praise unto him, not just there, but in Hebrews chapter 2, oh yes, in Hebrews chapter 2, and beginning at verse number 12, we have another passage that gives us the authority for how God wants us to praise him in New Testament worship. The Bible says, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church when I sing praise unto thee. The Bible says nothing about playing praise. It says nothing about beating praise. It says nothing about plucking praise. It says nothing about picking praise. It says nothing about keying a praise. It says nothing about clashing a praise. It says nothing about drumming a praise. When God wants 
shouts of praise. He said he wants you to open your mouth in the midst of the assembly and sing praise unto him. Not just there, but Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 9.